we today also need help. We need help in order for us to live in the freedom of the gospel that Paul talks about. Because we can only deal with freedom with the help of Jesus in our lives. Okay? Freedom allows for love. Freedom is necessary for love. But in our fallen state, when we have that freedom, we choose to love ourselves rather than living in the freedom and loving those around us. But we can only love others around us through the help of Jesus. 1 John chapter 4 says, We love because he first loved us. He loved us enough to come to earth to express his love for us by dying on the cross. And, and the punishment that he received on that cross was punishment that we should have received for the sins that we have committed. And, and his dying on that cross restored our relationship with God. But he doesn't stop there. He empowers us then to stop loving ourselves, and he allows us then to freely love and to serve others. And the way he does that is he empowers us to begin to love others through the giving of his Holy Spirit. Verse 27 says, And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires, if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. So obviously the Spirit is a very key part of fixing this problem that Adam and Eve started, this idea of selfishness. And Paul speaks of the Spirit often. Uh, if we go to 2 Corinthians, he says this. He said, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Once again, we see a, a link here. And it is through Christ's Spirit living in us that we no longer need the laws. And, and, and that's what really ultimately Paul is getting at. That's his idea of freedom. He's saying that we will be capable of loving others because the Spirit will give us the desire to love others. We no longer need the laws to tell us that, but because of the Spirit living within us, that Spirit gives us this desire, and we actually want to love others. And elsewhere, the Scripture says that love fulfills the law, that if we love our neighbor as ourselves, we will fulfill everything that the law would ever ask us to do. So it looks simple then, huh? The, we get the Holy Spirit, and through the Holy Spirit we love others, and we can freely love others and, and uh, do it out of joy and, and, our, and the, the desire. But there's a problem. Although we are God's children, although we have his Spirit living in us, we can still live like Christian atheists. Ever heard of a Christian atheist? Now, for those who were at VBS this week, that was what our topic was. A Christian atheist is believing in God, but living like he doesn't exist. And as we had discussions in our small groups during the session this week, one of the, the core issues that we got to as a Christian atheist is, is we choose not to let the Spirit take full control of our lives. Rather, we want the control, and we don't give that control up to the Holy Spirit. You know, you know, the Spirit works in our lives and transforms us, but we don't allow that Spirit to transform our lives. And that's the problem that the Galatians were having. They were becoming Christian atheists. And so Paul had to remind them. He says, but I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of of the flesh. And then he goes on and, and gives this long list of these desires of the flesh, which again are these things that you're not supposed to do, which is the impression that everybody in the world has today. And so Paul kind of flips things around and he gives a positive vision 
a positive vision of what this world would look like if we walk by the Spirit. And this positive vision that he gives is what we call today as the fruits of the Spirit. And this also was our VBS theme for our children today. And they sang a song, and we had a little message up for them at the early service today. And so I'd like to just to go through this list, this vision that Paul has for those who uh, walk by the Spirit. And let's visualize this of what a congregation that, that, uh, that follows this vision, that, that lives by the Spirit, might look at. First of all, there's love. Can you imagine a church that truly loves and cares for each other through good times and in bad. There's joy. Can you imagine a church that exhibits true joy? Broad smiles and eyes that light up when you enter. Peace. A church where there's a sense of peace and stability regardless of what is going on around them. Patience. Can you imagine a church full of patient people willing to withhold judgment and to bring encouragement? Kindness and goodness. A church willing to help in time of need, to make a difference in this world. Faithfulness. A church faithful to God and his word, and faithful to each other, not willing to give up on each other. Gentleness. A church that is gentle even when confrontation is occasionally necessary. Self-control. A church with level-headed people able to keep their sharp tongues under control. And then comes that verse. Against such things there is no law. that when we live by the Spirit and we do these things, the law really is no longer needed because we're going to do what the law says just out of desire from the Spirit living within us. You know, many people today do see the church as nothing more than a set of rules and restrictions. I'd like to challenge us. Let us begin to change that perspective. Let us overwhelm them with fruit. Let us offer them a fruit salad like they have never seen before. In Jesus' name, amen.